Hi, and welcome back to Renovating Orchard Cottage. Now today I'm here with my wife. Hi, I'm Lorraine, and today we are going to show you around the inside of the cottages. Um, we'll show you what work we've got to do and what our plans are. Enjoy. So this is the main door that we're using at the moment into the cottages. Now there are two doors, both of which are at the back of the cottages, one for each uh, side. And this one brings you into a 1960s utility room, so a flat roofed uh, utility room. And <laughs> this is absolutely not in keeping with the rest of the cottages. Not at all. So at the moment we're using it for as our kitchen. Um, it's got plenty of storage in it, lots of room for everything we need. But we don't have a cooker at the moment, so we're using a microwave and a single hob, uh, which is interesting for all five of us, but we're getting by. Um, and uh, I suppose one day it will become our utility room when we have an actual kitchen. <laughs> so let's go straight through to the kitchen then. Um, now we have to duck for this. After you. <laughs> so this goes through into the main, I guess you'd call it a farmhouse kitchen, although there's not much kitchen stuff actually in here. Um, there's units all the way around the sides and um, they used to be when we moved in just a few weeks ago a unit in here with a sink but we had no dishwasher and <laughs> didn't we we didn't have a dishwasher we didn't have um, washing machine, uh, washing machine cooker. cooker hob everything so <laughs> we we pulled that out and temporarily put a dishwasher in there just so that we can then use that so this this is the kitchen this is what we envisage will be the kitchen in the end um, but at the moment, obviously, the utility room really is where um, everything that we need is. And we've got our table in the corner there, um, a really nice um, box window here with a window seat that we can make something into a, a nice feature. And then over here, we've got one of three Rayburns. Um, yes, one of three. There are two more which are in the outbuildings. Um, and this looks really cool because it's nicely nestled there into um, the old chimney stack. Now you can see that the pipes um, are coming out there. Now that actually is to heat the hot water. At the moment, the only way we've got to heat the hot water is to stoke up the fire. Yes, stoke up the fire. That's not oil, it's not gas. It is actually a coal um, ray burn. So that's the only way we can heat the hot water. Or the other option, which of course is the one that we use, is to use um, the electric immersion heater, um, which you have to put on about an hour before you need a shower, which is very interesting in the morning. Thankfully, it's someone else gets up when they do their workout in the morning. Someone gets up early, yeah, and turns it on. Yeah, um, which is great. <laughs> um, so hopefully that'll be changing soon. So anyway, so the plan is, should we talk about the plan for yes. the new kitchen? Okay, go for it. So in about three weeks, we've got um, an oven, a strange oven arriving, um, which we're planning on putting centrally under the window here. Um, the ceiling's quite low, so we've had to have a think about what we are doing with regards to um, a fan, fan. <laughs> a ventilation fan, um, but I think we're going to either have a low profile one or just one set into the ceiling. Um, so yeah, I mean one of the things that we found and we didn't really think about is of course normally you've got a wall behind your cooker, so normally what you can do is you can just put one of the kind of wall mounted ones that either recycles or takes the, um, takes the cooking smells out, but in this situation we haven't and there wasn't really anywhere else in the kitchen that we thought that we could actually place it. Um, without it looking a little bit strange. So we want to centralise it, we want to put it right in underneath there. But the um, electricians that we've got coming, that's Hickman's Electricians from Rawton. Um, just a quick thumbs up to you guys. They're going to come and install a um, extractor fan for us, which is going to sit almost flush in the ceiling above it. And then it's going to vent up through the um, joists and uh, out to pull all the moisture out, because we don't really want a recirculating one. Because this is an old house, we want to make sure that we don't give moisture or damp any opportunity um, to hang around. Um, now we could have had gas actually, couldn't we? We did think about having gas, yeah. but the problem with gas is 40% of what you burn is basically moisture. So obviously if your moisture is going into the house, you've got to get it out somehow. So um, we've gone with an induction hob. So it's a big um, kind of like range cooker stoves. Um, we've gone for it in icy white. Yeah. Um, we kind of wanted to make sure that it had that um, country look, but also at the same time, um, it looks quite modern. So icy white, um, induction hob and then four room ovens underneath and as I said that will sit centrally about there. Yeah. Okay so carrying on uh, with our plan for the kitchen the plan is to put a, um, a sink and draining board in the corner here come along here with a worktop 
obviously as we've mentioned the cooker in the middle and then worktop round the corner uh, a couple of wall units on the wall as well for extra storage and then if you come over here um, we're going to try and tie this area in we did think about putting the cooker in the alcove here um, but actually the one that we wanted wouldn't fit so um, I think that is going to have to go but the plan is to put some work surface in there maybe make it into a bit of a drinks cabinet type thing uh, and then have a couple more units here maybe with our kettle and the tea making facilities there and maybe a couple more units here depending on how hemmed in it feels but um, that's the plan. I mean that is the plan but it's probably <laughs> worth saying that at the moment we don't even have the money to do this so it's a case yeah. of prioritising and working out what we do in, in what order but that's the current plan and it may well be that actually once we get a couple of kitchen companies round and suppliers round they may well have other ideas but at the moment yeah. that's the idea and I think the other thing just to quickly mention um, Lorraine is we, we did talk originally about not having the dining room table in here mm -hmm. and we were just going to make it a, a kitchen but the problem is the kitchen is always like the hub of the home and every time we have everyone people around congregates in it, yeah, like everyone kitchen. congregates in it so it just felt wrong not to have um, that kind of traditional farmhouse kitchen with the, the table actually in the, um, in the main kitchen so I think we're going to stick with that which does mean that it's a little bit tight in here like, like you were just saying Lorraine that there's actually nowhere for our um, fridge freezer um, our big fridge freezer that's next uh, next door, the American fridge freezer. So that will probably end up having to stay in the utility room. But um, I think that's just the price that we'll we'll pay to make sure that again, as you said, that this is the this is the hub of the home. Yeah. It's also worth noting that all of the stuff we've got is just pulled in from our other house. So our other house was a late sixties house, so we don't yet have any furniture, any accessories, or anything that really match the type of house that we've moved into. So that's another thing that we we need to do in time in terms of interior design, thinking about how everything looks, thinking about decorating, all of those things, um, they are absolutely um, on the list, but we just don't know in what order yet. Yes, um, um, and the builders that um, were in before we moved in uh, gave us another job to do as they decided to paint everything white, including this lovely wooden beam, um, which ideally we would have had left natural. Uh, so we're gonna have to work out how to strip the paint off there um, and yeah so if you've got any any ideas about that about how to strip paint off of beams please let us know because it's um, glass as well. yes gloss <laughs> and it's a nightmare we know that it looks great underneath because the beams in the other cottage are left exposed and they are a really nice color i'm not particularly a fan of black beams um but luckily these are like a nice brown color um so they we really do want to expose them and again actually we've got the beam that runs all the way across here too so i think just trying to get that off I think would just bring a bit of character back into the into the house. But yeah, if you, anyone's got any ideas on how to get that off, the easiest way to, to get that off, please do um, comment and let us know. Right, so if you follow me through, um, actually, as we come through this door, it's worth noting that we were wondering why this door wouldn't close properly. Now, most of the doors don't actually close properly, um, but we were wondering why this door doesn't close properly. And as you can see, the catch is here, but actually the, the receiving part is down here and it took us a while to work it out, but Lorraine, you actually were the one well, that Well, yeah, out. I realised that yeah, the you did. Uh, people, as I say, the decorators that came in before we moved in must have taken it off to decorate and they have put it on upside down and back to front. Yeah, which is exactly why this doesn't fit. So this door has to be turned completely around and then they've used screws, which don't nice match. Ugly screws. Um, and also they are too long, so they go straight it's through down to the side. So, Coming through into here, now this was what we were going to use as our dining room. The plan was to use this um, as our dining room, but the problem is whilst the space is big enough, we're just snookered by one of the doors. By the time you've got this door open, and then by the time you've got this door open, you don't really have much room at all in order to actually um, be able to get by. So. Um, what we've decided to do actually is make this the entrance hall. Now, um, we've got a, a baby grand piano which I inherited um, from my grandpa um, some years ago. Um, and we just think it looked really nice in here. Um, we've got an open fireplace here. We'll talk about the fireplaces um, in a minute. But with the open fireplace and with the piano, and we've got a little bench in here um, that you can sit down and put your shoes on. Our idea is that actually we'll make this our entrance hall. So as I said at the beginning, we've got two doors at the back of the property, one at each end, but really it's back to front and we want to make this the front of the property. So the idea is to put a front door in here and what we would like to do is then put something like an oak framed porch or something actually on the front. You know what it's like with kids, um, shoes, scooters. Totes, bags, yeah. school stuff. 
everything. Okay, so moving on from our entrance hall, uh, we come through here, mind your head again, uh, another nice wooden door which doesn't close because the builders have put it on too low, but we'll change that. Um, this is our living room. Um, so as Matt said, we've kind of got all the furniture from our previous house, uh, which is fine, it fits in here okay. Um, and uh, we had fun trying to put the TV on the wall. Um, so we found out from a history book that these cottages were originally uh, were built from chalk block. So I was a bit worried when we, <laughs> when we were um, putting this on the wall. Uh, that chalk wouldn't hold up the TV, but um, it took us till about 1.30 in the morning, but we, yeah. got, we got there in the end and it's stayed up for a good few weeks now, so we're and happy only, with that. It only just fitted actually, didn't it? It's worth saying, because yes. we had to actually, the way that the mount works, you have to actually have to lift, lift the TV up, up yeah. higher in order to drop it. So literally we had about a millimetre spare to get it exactly where we've got it now. <laughs> so, But you can see the beams in here, the beams are really nice in this colour, or we, we like them. Um, so we just got to do the same on the other cottage now and make sure that we expose all of those to to really show off some of the features yeah uh, i've got a bit of electrical work to do down here to try and hide all of that but that's that's in the pipeline and um, our eldest son aaron uh, very kindly cleaned out a bit of the chimney for us and um, so there was a bird's nest in there uh, at the bottom here which kind of started falling through so he cleaned all that out for us and um, the plan is to get those swept out before next winter so that we can use them as an open um, fire. Yeah, it's also worth saying um, our friend Andy Knight, shout out to Andy, came over last weekend and um, very kindly took some drone footage for us and while he was there he went over the top um, of the roof and inspected the chimneys and there are no cows at all um, on our chimneys so that explains why the water's getting down, the damp's getting down and of course the bird's nests. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as a lounge, uh, we really love it, it's nice and cosy. Um, we've got no curtains or blinds anywhere in the house yet so um, that is on our to-do list, um, although we're not really overlooked, particularly at the back here. Uh, we've got amazing views out here, um, which we love. These these doors are really nice, but again, they're not, I mean, we'll talk about the doors and the windows in a minute, but um, <laughs> they need to be remade really, but this is really, really pretty. So if we do end up replacing these doors, these single glazed doors, um, we'll replace them with something that's in keeping and looks very much um, in the style that it is now. We've got this lovely little window, haven't we? It's probably the favorite window, the window yeah, of the house. Yeah, it's quite pretty. Um, it's all been painted, so it's painted shut actually. Once again, the uh, the decorators did a great job. <laughs> it's also probably worth quickly saying something more about the um, the fireplace. So one of the things is um, that this fireplace is so deep. So you've got a regular kind of fireplace here, but then from here, all of this is chimney stack, all the way through to here, all the way through to here, all the way through to here. You're talking about about nine foot, and yet all you've got is a very shallow um, fireplace on both sides. So I think that might be hiding a bit of a gem. I wonder whether there's a nice angle nook in there somewhere that we could, could knock out or something that we could do with it. Because unfortunately, this certainly isn't in keeping with the rest of the cottage. This was done much later. So I'd love to take that out and explore. Could we do something with regard to an angle nook? Um, you know, there's a lot of space in there. It's just about exposing it and doing something a little bit nicer with it. Yeah. And the other thing I think in here would be nice to get a bit of artwork on the wall, maybe add a bit of colour. Um, but we've been looking for something and it just takes a bit of time to work out what we want because again we want it to be in keeping with the age of the cottage but not really old-fashioned so it's really difficult isn't it yeah. when you move from a house which is quite contemporary to a house that's like this you've kind of got to be sympathetic to the building that you're in but equally what we don't want to do is make it look like a really really old-fashioned country house so it's about how you kind of um bridge that and um yeah, that's going to be a challenge for us, but I'm sure there'll be many more videos to come um, on interior design. Okay, why don't you come on through to the next room? So here um, is quite a small room, um, quite a narrow room, but this is what we are using as uh, a kind of snug playroom, family room type thing. Um, as you can see, lots of storage for the kids' stuff. Um, they can come in here, watch TV, play on the Xbox or whatever they want to play on. Well, the only problem though at the moment is we don't have a door here um, <laughs> no. and my study is just the other side so not great um, layout and positioning but we we'll have to work on that. Now one of the things which um, <laughs> we have been concerned about really before we even moved in is the beams that are here. Now as you can see they look particularly um, old, people have tried to patch them and stuff um, and one of the things which is slightly worrying is there are clearly signs of 
um, at least historical woodworm in here. Now we did have a couple of experts that independently came out and looked at this and I think generally speaking there was a risk of woodworm but I think it was m deemed more um, likely that it's historical. Mm. Um, although as we understand it one of the signs of active woodworm is frass, I think they call it, which basically is a fine sawdust which is dropped um, as the, the woodworm are eating the wood. Now the worrying thing that we've got since we've been here is we are actually seeing quite a lot of um, sawdust, like gritty um, kind of dust. Well, that's a bit of normal dust, but quite gritty dust that we're finding um, on some of our on some of our um, uh, units and some of our stuff. So we're slightly worried that it might be that, but then we're equally aware sure, that we? yeah, I mean. Nobody's... People walking upstairs and dust dropping out from the beams. Obviously the house was left empty for about 18 months before we moved in, so it hasn't had any movement. Um, and you know, with kids running around upstairs and things, we might we think it might just be the movement from that that's dropping bits out of the out of the wood. So we'll have to just keep an eye on it, I think, and keep our fingers crossed that it's not active. Yeah, woodworm. anyone that knows anything about woodworm or has got any tips, please let us know. <laughs> um, preferably telling us everything is fine because we don't want to know anything else. <laughs> and it doesn't cost any money to get it sorted. I know, absolutely. Um, <laughs> the other thing quickly to say, um, we didn't capture this on video because it's happened relatively early on, but you can see some um, water there, um, watermarks uh, all the way down the wall. Now, <laughs> right above that is um, our second bathroom. Um, and we'll take you upstairs and show you later, but we had a bit of an issue with that, didn't we? And water yeah. was running out from underneath and through the walls. So, yeah. oh, there's been lots of jobs, <laughs> lots of stuff that we haven't actually even captured. I know, um, yeah. But anyway. So that's it. Shall we go to the next room? Uh, along here is the study. Um, this has got the, I think this was probably the main front door to this cottage. So it causes a bit of confusion when delivery drivers um, come and knock at the door and match trying to work. but. Um, We'll probably change that for um, like a glass glass door or something. Because it's so it, yeah. that's the other thing as well. The views out here are amazing. Um, huh, kids playing outside. So the views out here are really really amazing. Um, and so yeah, we really want to maximise solar gain um, by having more glass, and then also um, you know just just tidy it up really. So this is the study, this is where I work. Um, and the nice thing is sometimes I can be sitting here in video calls, and um, there's often cows in that field there and they love to come right up to the boundary and um, put their head over either eating that bush or scratching their necks on the barbed wire so it's really nice actually just sitting here working in video calls and having that kind of view um, to look at at the same time. Also I really love the floor in here. Um, parquet flooring. Parquet flooring, it's really cool, funky, I really like it so we'll probably keep that. Um, we're not sure what we're going to do with the flooring actually in the rest of the downstairs. Um, ideally, I think we'd like to put wooden flooring down, um, and I think we probably will at some point, but at the moment we'll just uh, keep it with the carpets and until we've done the work. I'm also aware that we've um, shown all the best bits of the house so far, and there are a few other things to say. Um, well, firstly, just quickly as I'm going past, <laughs> this is um, our Starlink broadband internet. So um, our only guaranteed speed, if we've got standard internet here, is 2.9 meg, which working from home um, with the kids in the house too, um, my son doing online gaming, just 2.9 is not enough. So we've got Starlink, which is Elon Musk's satellite broadband, low orbit satellites. I'll do another video about that another time, but we've installed that up on the side of the house and that's giving us anywhere between, oh, I don't know, about 100 up to about 200 meg per second. Absolutely brilliant bit of kit, so clever, so good. Um, anyway, at the moment I haven't run the wire where it needs to go, so at the moment um, it's just running uh, through the letterbox, hence uh, that being the letterbox. But the other thing to say is we haven't had heating. So when we moved in here, we didn't have any heating, did we, for the yeah, first for the, the week, first week? Yeah, we moved in. So we moved in um, the week that it was minus. I think it was minus, minus four. four. Yeah. Absolutely freezing. I mean, the whole moving thing, and we could almost do a video about that, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. um, our son Joshua got COVID on moving day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then a week later, he tested negative, and then our eldest son Aaron tested positive the same day. So we were basically housebound for a couple of weeks with yeah. no heating, no cooker, no washing machine, no dishwasher. It was a challenging couple of weeks. It was challenging, <laughs> but we didn't have any heating. Anyway, AHS Heating, which are based in Swindon, another shout out to AHS. They were absolutely fantastic. They came out a few times for us and they've managed to get us up and running. They've changed the pump. We've now got heating. We've got an oil boiler here because this is completely off grid. We're not connected to main sewage. 
um, we're not connected to um, gas. So we've got an oil boiler here. They've got that all up and running for us. And now we've got heating, which is fantastic. The radiators are all working yeah. nice and hot. Yeah. We just don't have any way of heating the hot water with them yet. So AHS are going to come back for us and they're actually going to um, do quite a lot of work on the system to get it all connected to the um, heating system. Oh, sorry, not heating system, hot oh, water yeah. system. Yeah, so that we um, can program the hot water to hot come water. on. And I don't have to get up at silly o'clock to turn on. <laughs> and we're going to get a Nest thermostat as well. And we have that in our last house. It's absolutely brilliant, Nest. Saves you so much money because if you're not here, heating doesn't come on. Mm. And you can do it all remotely. And we go away for a weekend and then yeah. we're coming back in the camper van and you go, oh, let's turn put it on the... before we get back. Yeah, turn it on before we get back, put the hot water on. Then by the time we get back, the kids can have a bath, etc. So, yep. oh, one quick thing while we're here. Um, all along this side, We've got a little bit of a damp problem, but hopefully we're thinking it's a historic damp problem. You can see as you go through here that there's a few patches and a lot of the skirting boards along this side look like they're a little bit rotten. Um, now, I think the problem is the ground level outside is just way too high. I don't know if you can see properly here, but um, basically the ground level outside is probably three to four inches higher than it is inside. Now, normally it would be the other way around. And of course, this is an old house. Um, so it's built straight on the mud and the base part of it is stone um, and so there's no damp course and so what happens is you've just got rising damp um, but in addition to that we've got the ground level the other side which is quite high and lots of vegetation was allowed to grow um, just outside along there so what's happened is it's just been drawing the damp in through the walls so what we do need to do is do some groundwork so that's another thing anyone that's got any great ideas or had a good experience with the groundwork company please let us know um, because what we need is excavating all of the surrounding certainly down the back possibly down the sides as well um, and then some a french drain put in so that as the water runs in it automatically drops down and is shoved off left or right to one of the drainage ditches which you probably remember seeing from an earlier video so that's the end of the downstairs tour and I think because of the length of that we'll make the upstairs a second video. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining us um, and letting us show you around the cottages. Please do subscribe. So hit that um, subscribe button and then hit the bell icon as well and then you'll be notified um, when we release the next part um, of the tour which will include upstairs. But please do like, share, comment. Um, as I said before, any comments, any suggestions, any ideas, if you've done this if you've got companies that you've used, if you've got suggestions in terms of the windows or getting the, um, the damp sorted or dealing with woodworm or anything else that we've mentioned in this video, then please do comment and let us know because we really would appreciate yeah, we really um, anyone you. else's input. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.